Number one, qualitative data is that which tells a quality, something about it, not a number. Quantitative data tells how many or how much. This is usually a number. Color of jackets in a men's clothing store, not a number, so that's a quality. Qualitative. Number of seats in a classroom, that's a number, how many, how much, so quantitative. Weights of newborn babies, that's a number. Quantitative. Classification of students, law enforcement, human services, computer science. That's not a number, that's quality, something about the students. So that's qualitative. Discrete or continuous. Discrete is something that can be counted in whole numbers, number of. Continuous is something that has whole number values but also could have numbers in between whole number values like decimals or fractions. A. Number of credit cards a person has. Number of. You only have one credit card or two credit cards or three credit cards. That's discrete. The amount of drug injected into a rat. That's continuous. That could be 2.3 grams or something. Weights of suitcases selected on a commercial airline flight. Continuous. Weights could be 38.5 pounds. Number of exams given in a stats course. Number of one, two, three, four, that's discrete. Nominal ordinal interval ratio. I remember that these two are most often numbers. Interval goes with temperatures. Ratios for almost everything else. If you want a better definition, go to your book. Nominal is the names of things that have no order. So I remember nominal names. And ordinal is usually names of things, um, but it's like in an order, first, second, third, fourth. So I think of ordinal, the ordinal numbers are first, second, third. Usually words, I'll show you an example. So temperatures. That's a number, since it's temperature, I guess interval. Classification, law enforcement, human services, computer science, those are names of things, that's nominal. Classification by year, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. That's ordinal because freshman comes first, then sophomore, then junior, then senior. There's an order to them, so that's ordinal. Number of exams given in a stats course. That's number, not a temperature, so I pick ratio. Construct a frequency distribution. In order to do this, I need to know how big to make my groups. I need to figure my class width. To find the class width, Take the range of values and divide by the number of classes you want. We're supposed to use five. So our range, let's see, range is high minus low. So my range is 54, that's my high value, minus 40, that's my low value, so 14. So I take 14 divided by 5, and I get 2.8. I always round this number up so that I get 3 for my class width. So my class width is going to be equal to 3. Now that I know my class width is 3, I can make my groups. My first group will start with my lowest value, 40. My class width is 3. Be careful, this does not go from 40 to 43. 
your class width goes from the lower bound of your first group to the lower bound of your second group. So here's where I add 3, 43. So here's the class width. So then again, I'll add 3. Then how do I find this? Well, my next class starts at 43, so this one must end at 42. My next class starts at 46, so this one goes to 45. You see here I can just keep adding 3 as well. This is my class limits. In order to find my class boundaries, I will go 0.5 below 40 and 0.5 above 42. So I'll have 39.5 to 42.5 and so on. Next, I will tally my results. So 52 goes in this class, tally. 54 goes in this class. Tally, and so on. Once I'm done tallying, I count up the tally marks to tell me the frequency. Frequency 2, 7, 10, 8, 3. To find n, I add up my total frequencies to find the total number of uh, points 30. Let's talk histogram. I'm using an old piece of graph paper but this is number five constructing the histogram for number four. Notice on a histogram you have the frequencies on the y-axis, the class boundaries on the x-axis, and you just make bar graphs showing the frequency. Frequency of the first class was 2, then 7, and so on. So you end up with a bar graph. Again, histogram has frequencies on the y-axis, boundaries on the x-axis, a bar graph showing the number of frequencies with bars that touch each other. The next graph is the frequency polygon. The frequency polygon has frequencies on the y-axis, midpoints on the x-axis. There are dots with the frequencies above the midpoint for each class. The frequency polygon, you want to start at zero and connect that to your first dot. Then you connect all of your dots with straight lines and connect back down to zero. So things to remember about a frequency polygon, it uses the midpoints on the x-axis, frequencies on the y, dots for the frequencies, and then connect the dots, making sure to connect down to zero on both ends. Frequency polygon. I'll also talk about the ogive. Ogive plots cumulative frequencies, so you'll need to add an extra uh, column to your table with the cumulative frequency boundaries on the x-axis. You start by making a dot at zero at the first boundary. Then you plot the cumulative frequency above the upper bound of the first class. So the upper bound of the first class was 42.5 and that had a boundary or a, a frequency of 2. Cumulative frequency of 2. The next cumulative fre frequency is 9 so you put a dot there and then 19, and so on. At the end, you connect your dots with straight line segments, starting at zero, because your first dot is at zero, and going all the way up. This last dot should be at n, your total number of frequency. You do not connect an O drive back down to zero like you do for the frequency polygon. Again, this measures cumulative frequency. So cumulative frequency is on the y-axis, 
class boundaries on the X.